Good morning, everyone. We welcome you all to Ortho TV Online One Talk One Speaker Series. Uh, we hand over to Dr. Uh, B. Shiv Shankar uh, for moderating today's session. You're muted, sir. You're muted. Yeah. Good morning, Neeraj. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, coordinating the Ortho TV One Person One Talk today. Uh, it's my great privilege to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Professor M. Shantaram Shetty, Pro Vice Chancellor of Nita University and Chairman of Tejaswini Hospital, Mangalore. Professor Shantaram Shetty graduated from Government Medical College, Mysore in 1964. That is before I was even born. He did his MS Orthopedics from Delhi University in 1970. He's fellow of Royal College of Surgeons from England, fellow of American College of Surgeons, then fellow of International College of Surgeons. Professor Shantaram Shetty was, has worked as professor and head of the department and director of postgraduate studies in orthopedics at Kasturaba Medical College, Mangalore from 1974 to 1998. He has a total teaching experience of over 48 years. He has also worked as dean of Day Medical College from 98 to 2007 for nine years. He was the vice chancellor of Nite University in Mangalore in between 2008 to 2012. He was also president of Karnataka Orthopedic Association in 1985, president of Indian Orthopedic Association in 2009, and his theme at that year was Disability Free India. He was the AO Trustee Switzerland nominee from representing India from 2005 to 2010. He has conducted over 22 trauma courses in different parts of country since then. He was the chairman of AO Trauma India and the first chairman to be nominated by AO Foundation Switzerland. He has been bestowed with many meritorious awards like Karnataka Rajyotsava Award for meritorious service in the field of medicine in 1991 International Lions President Award for the work for physically handicapped in between 1985 to 1996. Indian Medical Association's Award for Meritorious Service in 1999. He has been awarded the Honorary Fellowship by Indian Orthopedic Association in 2013. National Board of Exams has awarded the par excellence in medical education in 2014. Then, friends, Dr. Shantaram Shetty has made a mark in all the field he has worked, be it as a teacher, educationalist, or administrator, or even as a surgeon. He has over 400 students who have passed under him, D ortho, MS ortho, or DNB orthopedics at his hospital and medical college. Friends, it's my privilege to present to you today's speaker for one person, one talk series a teacher par excellence, an educationist, an administrator, and a great surgeon. It's none other than Professor Shantaram Shetty from Mangalore. He will be speaking on osteoporosis and osteoporotic fractures from Indian perspective. Sir, it's all yours now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shu. Thank you, Neeraj. Uh, for this unique opportunity to share a few of my thoughts on this very, very common uh, condition, which is, which is the bugbear of the society today. I bring the greetings from my own university and from my hospital. And uh, it has been in this uh, difficult days of COVID. It is great that the uh, Ortho TV and uh, Dr. Shiv Shankar, the Indian Orthopedic Association uh, through him and, uh, and all of us are taking so much of 
so much of interest in having our own webinar and and spending our time thank you very much again and uh, my talk will be on the divided into two the first part will be on the medical part of it and the preventive aspect of osteoporosis and the second half and after that there will be a question hour and after that there will be another another 50 slides on the different management especially the surgical aspects of treatment of osteoporotic fractures since um, osteoporosis is a very common condition and uh, since our viewers we, we from uh, postgraduates to the senior surgeons i'll go from the basics to the utmost in the management of this very common condition what is osteoporosis by definition osteo means bone and porosis means porous so it is a progressive systematic skeletal disease characterized by low bone mass and might you have to share your screen you are not started sharing the screen Yeah. Yes. Shall I go ahead? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. So what is osteoporosis? By definition, osteoporosis means bone and poro osteo is bone and porosis is porous. So it is a progressive systematic skeletal disease characterized by low bone mass and micro architectural deterioration of bone as a tissue. with a consequent increase in bone fragility that's why we call it fragile bone and with a susceptibility to fracture by definition of who operationally defines osteoporosis as a bone density that falls 2.5 standard deviation below the mean for any healthy adults of the same sex also it is referred as t score minus 2.5 if it is z score it is of the same age which we do not follow normally but it is the t score which we follow well if it is if if it is just the uh, t score is minus 1 then it is a low bone and uh, low, low bone density and we call it osteopenia what are the types of osteoporosis by origin by origin it is primary which is type 1 which is post menopause elderly women post menopause and type 2 is senile as as we get old it is senile osteoporosis the secondary causes are either it can be diseases related to renal failure hyperparathyroidism it can be corticosteroids driven or anti convulsants and also some some of the patients who depend on tobacco and alcohol abuse and mainly it is the primary type 1 and type 2 we are going to deal with and and the lifestyle problem primary osteoporosis affects 80% of women and 60% of men with the osteoporosis <clears throat> type 1 osteoporosis may occur in postmenopausal women characterized by accelerated and disproportionate trabecular bone loss and associated with vertebral body and distal forearm fractures that's why an elderly lady most commonly sustains a vertebral fracture or a distal radius fracture whereas men usually sustain fracture neck of the femur or trochanteric fractures and which is characterized by both bone trabecular and cortical bone loss and they can have proximal humerus proximal tibia fractures and trochanteric and fracture neck of the femur what are the laboratory tests biochemical profile to evaluate renal and hepatic function primary hyperparathyroidism malnutrition cbc for nutritional status and myeloma tsh to rule out hyperthyroidism and vitamin d level is to be which is which has become the fashion of the day to estimate the vitamin d estimation of everyone but it has to be done and 24 hour urine collection of calcium and vitamin d possible but today we have, we have gone further by biomic biochemical markers of bone remodeling where where may be useful to predict the rate of bone loss and which can follow therapy response specific biochemical markers followed for example 3 months interval to document normalization as a response to therapy whether your therapy is working at all or not and if it is a high turnover osteoporosis high levels of resorption markers and formation markers which results in accelerated bone loss responding best to anti resorptive therapy which has to be noted other one is low normal turnover osteoporosis 
normal or low level or the, the markers of resorption and formation. There is no accelerated bone loss in this, but it responds best to drugs that enhances bone formation. So these, these bone markers, biochemical markers can give you an indication. So basically, all of us understand it is bone metabolism. It is a balance between bone formation and bone resorption. And if there is an imbalance, it results in osteoporosis. What happens to the bone? As you see, there is loss of bone mass. Trabecular plates are less. The cortex thickness is less. And there is a contiguity, as you see in that picture. And there is thereby a structural weakening of the bone. So accelerated bone, bone loss occurs in women after menopause because of the activity of osteoclasts is enhanced. And the osteoclasts make a deeper and more numerous resorption lacunae. And the osteoblasts are unable to replace the resolved bone at the same time. By comparison, the bone loss that occurs with normal aging results from a decrease in osteoblast activity while osteoclasts retain normal or even slightly decreased activity. Well, gentlemen, the world population, all of us know, is aging. What was just a triangle in 1995 is becoming almost a rectangle today. As you would appreciate today that between 70 to 74 years, it is almost almost catching up with what is, what, what is 40 to 44 years, which is a dangerous trend. And moreover, what was in 1950, 8% of elderly people. In 2000, it was 10%. And mind you, in 2050, it will be 21% who are above 65 years of age. And also it is to be noted that majority of these patients will be in India and in the Southeast Asian countries and in China. So this point has to be taken into consideration for all of us. The dimension of the problem is fractured incidence will increase and two to four fold due to the aging of this population. And because of insufficient prophylaxis, you would appreciate in this slide, the patient first, first patient had a fracture of the trochanter fracture six months later, the other side, because the patient did not have any treatment. And again, one and a half years, a patient had a fracture there. And this 93-year-old lady, fracture neck of the femur, had a fracture for two years' time. This has to be taken into consideration. And insufficient prophylaxis. One fracture leads to, mind you, two to five-fold risk of fracture, future fractures. So the fractures, once an elderly patient develops a fracture, it has to be treated. And 20% have fractures on the opposite side in just five years time. So that with the aging, with, if a patient sustains a fracture at 70 years, by 75, there is a possibility 20% he will have a fracture on the opposite side. So by when, when there is a risk reduction with anti-resorptive drugs or whatever drugs you give, have, which you have selected, all the studies have proved by the Journal of Mineral Density Research, it has proved that 26 to 47% risk reduction has taken place. And one fracture leads, and this, this, is, this point has to be taken into consideration. What about India? In India, 6% it is estimated are osteoporotic, which is a very large number. Remember, there's 6.25 crores with the 1.3 billion population. One fifth sustain fractures at least once in their lifetime. And unless these people are treated properly, it can cause an economic stagnation of a developing country like ours. Osteoporosis, gentlemen, is treatable, but unfortunately it is underdiagnosed. And we wake up when there is a fracture, and even after that, very little is done. Gallic in osteoporosis reported have found only 18% of osteoporotic fracture patients treated were put on calcium or vitamin D or anti resorptive drugs, and only 10% had previous treatment. In India, we, we, we did this study. In our own study, we found that 35% are put on calcium and only 35%, even only one third are put on vitamin, even calcium and vitamin D, but only less than 1% are put on anti resorptive drugs, which has to be noted. In a study undertaken by Dr. Balu Sankaran, who happens to be my professor, 
we did a study by all his all his postgraduates of those days in 2000 uh, uh, 2000 compiled a book he reported osteoporosis to affect indian population at an earlier age compared to caucasians by almost one decade before so caucasians if they develop at 65 years we develop almost at 55 years especially the ladies what happens in osteoporosis is it the low number of osteoblasts or decreased activity of osteoblasts, angiogenesis, comorbidity is the rule. All are controversial publications. Look at this man, the governor of, uh, who was the governor of California, Arnold Sevenzeger, uh, uh, Seven sorry. Basically, look at him, he was Mr. World in 1988. And look at him, what happened in just about 30 years time, basking in the African coast, and look at his body structure. This is what happens. It's not only the bone, it's the muscles and all structures, there will be a structural disability. Today, all over the world, we have fracture risk assessment. That is fracture. That fracture, the, the developed by WHO to evaluate fracture risk. It predicts fracture risk by BMD plus the clinical risk factors. It provides individualized absolute risk over a 10 year period at the, of hip fractures and major osteoporotic fractures. The guidelines regarding when to intervene are definitely emerging with the fracture. Various risk factors have been emulated from age to sex, the BMD to prior history of fracture to smoking to current alcohol, rheumatoid arthritis and glucose, uh, glucocorticoid use. And apart from secondary osteoporosis, each risk factor independently contributes to fracture probability. So presence of more than one CRF increases the probability of fracture incrementally. So this has to be taken into consideration. Look into the smokers. I just put this slide to make you understand we are lucky compared to the other part of the world. China has the highest number of smokers at the almost 60%, whereas in India we have 30%. And our ladies are the least in the world taken into consideration, whereas the highest is Norway. So that, that, that is a lucky part, but 30% of people, as, as the study goes, are addicted to one form of tobacco or the other. It need not be cigarettes alone, it can be chewing various types of, uh, of tobacco. And intervention threshold has been definitely worked out so that when to intervene and what to be done at what time. In most of the developing countries, facts is at uh, much, unfortunately. And what is the best investigation is bone mineral density. Using dual energy X-ray absorptometry, DEXA, is the standard method and indicator of fracture risk. Many of many many of the centers just did, just do an ultrasound, or or go further even to do a CT. But the standard even today is a DEXA, and this is the classical DEXA picture of the hip and and the and the spine, which will give you a definitive indication if it is minus two point five. There is an indication of osteoporosis. We must understand that in osteoporosis in cancerous bone, there is a reduction of bone mineral density. Trabeculae are thin and reduced in number, whether it is in the hip or in the spine. Thereby, the bone holding capacity of the implant is reduced. Look at this a cortical bone, which is thinned out in an in a 80-year-old person compared to, as compared to 20 year 20-year-old person. That's why the screw holding capacity in the opposite cortex, which is just one to two thread when, when compared to in a 20 year old, which can be up to three or four threads. Well, what are the management strategies, investigation, treatment principles are the same, whether it's east or west, north or south, developed or underdeveloped, principles remain the same, but the philosophy has to change. Look in here, the, the, the exercise which the Chinese are undertaken in, in front of the Timpan Square, Timpan Square. Before uh, treating fractures, prevention has to be thought of. And by better care to the elderly, like better environment, hip pads, trivial falls can be prevented. And there were 50% of the fractures can be prevented. Exercises, tacky, and various training has increased the bone density and in all the literature available. In India, what happens? We advise sunlight, which is abundant, right from Kashmir to almost Kanyakumari. 
and which is a, and the diet with calcium with vitamin D groundnut which is easily available and cheap soya beans which is available sada and fish we have we have the largest coastal area any country can post up easily available and affordable to all the patients we are working on this model and early results are indeed encouraged coming to yoga it is we indians it's a, it was patanjali 5000 years ago bc who gave the concept of yoga to the people which died out luckily for the last 50 years yoga has got out all around the world so yoga 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 is a very very ideal model for exercises it can be any any type of asanas from from su simple surya namaskar to shirasana to the different types of asanas what to be done what not to be done it has to it has to be taken into consideration and pranayamas if, if it is undertaken and in elderly pranayamas and meditation and all the papers which have come through the nearly about 12 publications which have proved the bone mineral density has improved with uh, with yoga exercises what about yoga what about drug therapy the drugs are many from hormones to anti receptors to tamoxifen to calcitonin to pth to denesumab and up the latest we latest in the list is promesomozumab which is a sclerostin inhibitor and an anabolic agent with of course the support of vitamin calcium and vitamin d fda approved therapeutic options are preventive aspect of the estrogen as a, as i told you in type 1 and the primary and the treatment or the aspect of it is calcitonin the pth denesumab and remesumab whereas the alternate all the bisphosphonates are in between Teripartite is, as all of us know now, the recombinant human parathyroid hormone used for postmenopausal women with osteoporosis who are at high risk of fracture. It is also used in men with primary or hypogonadal osteoporosis who are at high risk of fracture. And the injection is 20 micrograms given in subcutaneously for not more than a period of 18 months. And uh, this is the, the usually it is better to give it. give with calcitonin it may increase the risk factor is the stroke has been has been identified as one of the risk factors in women and delivery device has already been, all of all of you know about it the cost has come down considerably to almost 3500 rupees a month and that means just about 43000 a year but others like strontium renylate which i won't go into detail but because of the ectopic calcification it promotes bone formation but as coming to the other bisphosphonates still now anti receptive agents such as elendronate and resedronate are the most potent as you see there the most commonly used drug in india is elendronate and resedronate the tablets bisphosphonates weekly monthly and yearly dosages and the follow up is dismal in our study we found gentlemen only 20% of the patients who are advised at taking anti receptors in spite of telling them it is better to take it and the complications of many of bisphosphonates as you, as you would appreciate the resorption resorption of the jaw bones the eye changes inflammatory changes and the subtrochanteric fracture which many of us have faced either uh, either unilateral or bilateral is well known as a complication of this phosphorylation coming to the pth which i mentioned uh, coming to denesumab which is which is a human monoclonal antibody to rankle which which was used initially in uh, jansen tumors it decreases bone resorption by inhibiting the formation and activity of osteoclast osteoclastic resorption and uh, it is a 60 mg uh, dose subcutaneously given every 6 months for three dosages and uh, risk factors may increase risk of infection and the cost is is fairly prohibitive but it, for 6 months it is 1.2 lakhs the last drug which has come in just last year which was approved by by the uh, by the fda fda just last year it is remesozumab it is also it's a 200 mg dose is administered subcutaneously in the abdomen and the cost is prohibitive as you appreciate per dose it is uh, as it's not available in india as such it is a sclerostin inhibitor 
so it is bone it resorbs it helps in resorption the inhibiting resorption of the bone because of the protein synthesis clerostin inhibitor at the same time it forms bone as well it has a dual effect so here i finish the the early i mean the the dangers of osteoporosis the epidemiology and the and the drug therapy and the preventive aspect of it i'll be too happy to add this juncture just it is uh, 25 minutes i'll be too happy to take the answer to questions for about 5 to 10 minutes 5 minutes and then i go on to the next part of it okay sir if you can stop the screen screen sharing you can be seen in a bigger screen uh what is your standard protocol for osteoporosis if a patient with fracture neck femur or risk colis fracture comes to you what is your further treatment of osteoporosis yeah see if a patient elderly patient comes with a, say if it is hormonal or otherwise it is very difficult we, we do not put on estrogen therapy our therapy is by 20 okay uh, how to record recovery after treatment means uh, you can analyze by dexa initially they are saying that uh, patient is having osteoporosis and classify but how much time it takes to see the results on a dexa that's why that's why i said it is it's a costly affair but uh, you know the university we are doing because it is much cheaper there to do it by by, by the biomarkers by a biomarker study you will be able to evaluate how much how much of bone has, has formed but it cannot be done in our daily practice so it, we just by a, by an x ray by the well being of the patient understanding that it can't be because the dexas will take nearly a an year and uh, to really make it make it possible have you started using in your clinical practice terapide peritide as yeah. a routine injection after any fracture uh, elderly osteoporotic fractures if the patient we tell the patient it is it is much better than uh, bisphosphonates uh, because of the complications which are ensuing and uh, we tell them the cost and uh, if they are if they are able to under many of them do understand and we put them routinely on teriparatide it has helped. yeah many of the patients we do start uh, teriparatide but unfortunately after 2 months or 3 months or even after the fracture unit they stop it can we restart after say one year if the patient comes again for some other problem uh, means after some gap can you restart teriparatide it can be teriparatide if it is discontinued it can be restarted after as as per the literature after one and a half to two years if the whole de- dosage is given usually it is not so the, but if it is immediately after one month or two months doesn't matter after one year you can restart okay normally it is said that uh, calcium in bone should be replaced with calcium yeah. so what's your take on just increasing the bone mineral density by supplementing with a non calcium ion like alendronate sodium or evandronate or all all these bisphosphonates no it is it it has be a supplementary device even with as i told you with the parathyroid hormone with the teripartite it is advised to give calcitonin it is advised to give calcitonin it has it has been found with the combination of calcitonin with teripartite it is much more helpful than giving teripartite alone similarly with bisphosphonates just giving bisphosphonates it's a, it controls just resorption of bone so where the where the calcium and vitamin d if there is a deficiency it has to be supplemented okay is there any role of anabolic steroids along with calcium and vitamin d supplements anabolic steroids i i i, I my, my physician and endocrinologist is somehow against it but many many of the centers have tried that because they're depending on on the on the analogy of androgens okay many times we see patient uh, for longer duration with osteoporosis you already finished your quota of pth for one or one or 1.5 years whatever it is yes uh, how, how to treat that patient further in my life after one and a half years of yes. patient that treatment yes osteoporosis treatment after you have uh, finished the quota of uh, treating with the perit no bisphosphonate can be given up to two or three year three years time and a, and a small a small period and it can be restarted it did not be it did not be stopped at stopped at one and a half years unless you think there are some complications whereas whereas if it it can be restarted whereas teripartite they do not advise to be restarted
can we combine this is dr nitin deshpande from kolapur asking can we combine teriperitide and denosumab what should be the protocol yeah it is it is a, it is a good question but a lot of lot of questions have been asked now, now whether denosumab can be given with if the patient can afford it that, that, that combination has has been proved to be better because one is it is a bone forming that's why this romisumab has come into being now which is both bone forming and bone resorption so side by side, it controls bone resorption romisumab and and bone formation whereas teripartite helps in bone formation whereas bisphosphonates uh, helps in controlling resorption of bone so that will be a combination which works okay attacking from all the aspects yes 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 uh, there is a question hematological test before starting teriparatide you want this is dr kabra pravin from aurangabad only 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 if it is if it is uh, hyper parathyroidism it has to be ruled out as i gave the list of investigations which are to be yes. to rule out liver rule out thyroid rule out all the other secondary problems okay dr nitin deshpande from kolapur has another question in renal impairment do yes. these need any monitoring means denosumab or uh, pth do they need any modification or mod monitoring as, as i know if the if the if the, but the renal uh, parameters will have to be worked out if the renal function deterioration is not there none of these drugs are advisable if you if your renal function is not good okay the last question before we take the next part of your talk have you seen any atypical fracture after prolonged bisphosphonate treatment taken by somebody yeah what are your views on medical management of that fracture medical management no if it is atypical fracture we have many we have a series which i presented in two three conferences which are atypical fractures bilateral and single and which has to be, the fixation becomes because of the problem that is that's a separate ball game the question question here is what what would be your medical line of treatment here already it has because of the bisphosphonates that the ideal thing is to give them teripartite with calcium and vitamin d supplements okay uh, dr nitin deshpande again wants to know uh, the combi com combination therapy of teriparatide with denosumab yes. what should be the protocol one after the other or both of them together it is it is given both of them together one after the other will not have itself okay yes sir thank you now we can go thank proceed you. for the next part of your talk i'll take one more question by the time you are sharing the screen ready, ready. what is your regular treatment regime when do you give bisphosphonates bisphosphonates immediately if, if the patient is operated we usually start after a month okay that is dr dakshina murthy's question yes sir thank you we can proceed yeah question and answer you have to click on the slide itself it was you were sharing the screen it yeah. has gone now yeah that's it yes well we'll go on to the other part of the uh, presentation on what are the surgical treatment goals when do you operate and how do you the treatment uh, option is to operate as early as possible all of us have come to this theme that whether it's a fracture of the femur or trochanteric fracture especially it has to be treated as early as possible the results are definitely much better if you treat the patient as early as possible well. all these patients 80 to 90% of these patients will have comorbid conditions in spite of that don't wait for control of diabetes control of anything but go ahead and do the surgery you will see the difference and to avoid complication this is this is the better the bed shows to prevent secondary fractures and to correct non surgical problems and to return to the same quality of life our aim of a surgical treatment is to make the patient return to the same quality of life gentlemen we must understand that in osteoporotic fractures we are not just treating the fractures or usually comminuted 
but an elderly patient with many super added problems like diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, osteoarthrosis, rheumatoid arthritis, social and economic problems added together. So most of the patients are neglected and not treated properly world over. And the patient compliance is also low. And look into this was the old Petro Regazzani slide, which may which you would have seen many times. And this is the th this is the thinness of the cortical bone where to where to fix your screws and plates. And that is the next cell which you are trying to fix it. So the basic principle to be followed in osteoporotic fractures is to get good results. In the present scenario, is to use biological fixation, use of load sharing implants like interlocking nails, tension band constructs, locking plates. Bring about impaction and compression, which enhances stability. Use wide, wide buttress plate, as you see here, the proxim proximal uh, uh, humerus. Use tension band devices, long splintage, interlocking nails, longer plates, augmentation by bone cement or bone wraps. Finally, if you think there is no other option, replacement orthoplasty is the best choice, whether it is fracture neck of the femur, trochantic fracture, even sometimes in supragondal fractures or proximal humerus. No doubt today, LC plates and anatomical plates and different variable angle plates today have changed the scenario again, especially in metaphyseal fractures, especially upper tibial fractures, as you see there, supracondylar fractures, proximal humerus, and distal humerus, and distal radius fractures with specialized variable angle plates. Augmentation techniques have come into with a special cement delivery system where bone screw with perforations have, have been modulated, as you would appreciate on the right corner side, the bone screw cement delivery system. And uh, definitive studies have proved today that uh, the blade is much better than a screw. And this, this, this definitely shows how far, the, how far the virus collapse can occur and how, with how many cycles and how, how stronger the PFNA or PFN is compared to a screw. And also the chewing of the bone in, in a screw compared to compared to a blade, we will appreciate in that cross section. And with the blade, less loss of bone with impaction and the increased bone contact area. And the cut, cutting of the screws also has been found to be, it is 12 point, all, almost up to 12.6% compared to 3.6% in a blade. And that is, and look at the, look at this picture where, where it has been ideally done with the, with the introduction of the we won't debate about the short and the long but but here it, you see it, uh, how the virus collapse has been definitely prevented augmentation to pfna small amounts of cement improves the axial and rotatory stability significantly and in an in an osteoporotic patient you must understand it is almost an eggshell better cement distribution with lower bmd and the principle is the increased bone implant interface will occur. And this is the Tromosome uh, cement kit, which you see, which is viscose. And you see the holes on the, on the left-hand side of, of the blade and where the perforations are there and the cement will percolate. And that is, that is how it comes. The final picture, you see the perforation and the cross-section of the perforation, which you appreciate. It can also be done in the distal, distal femur fractures, where, the, where, where there is a shell again, where the, where the screw has perforations and, and the cement can be impregnated. And uh, he, would, he would appreciate whether it is vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty have brought in remarkable relief of pain, lessening of deformities with calcium sulfate. And also today we have augmentation techniques and not only with cement, but with definitive augmentation implants, which are coming to different types of cages and implants, which give stability to the vertebral column so that they, they won't collapse further and result in disability to the patient and the deformity and the pain relief will be remarkable. What about in India? India, we are 1.24 billion people. And now it is 1.3 billion people. And 10% can afford any type of treatment. 60% are middle class families, half of them cannot afford even an LCP, and 30% are below poverty line who cannot afford any line of treatment. How to solve this problem? Change the implant design, it's a long, expensive way to go. Shivashankar will agree with me, it's a long, expensive way to go. 
Use standard implants in a rational way. Use load sharing, not load bearing device by bridging and sprinting. And no peak load or not, not stress concentration. Forces are to be equally distributed by any implant which you use. Hence a balance between use of sophisticated implants of variable angle plates to simple tools like Elizaro method, tension band devices, but as plates to bring about acceptable results are to be thought out, which can bring about good results if done properly. Look at this shattered osteoporotic fracture of the proximal humerus, beautifully fixed with, with a phyllose plate, with a, with a wire with good results. But whereas this, this fracture is the three-part fracture which has been completely displaced in an elderly patient, and with a simple sharp where the sharpie fibers get, where they guarantee excellent hold with simple circulage wire, it has brought back and uh, you would appreciate the patient has almost more than 100 degrees of abduction. Look into this fracture dislocation, of a posterior dislocation of the shoulder. This was done nearly 10 years ago, where the, even the fellows, before the fellows time, the proximal, proximal plate, proximal plate of the uh, proximal humerus, and it has been beautifully fixed. What is important is reduction of the fracture, bring about anatomical reduction and fix it. Whereas today we have many devices. Here is a 70 year old, three weeks old fracture, which the patient came to us, the head of the head of the humerus is way, way up. And we fixed with the multi-lock nail. We have done, we have a large series of multi-lock nail these days. You would appreciate multi-lock nail has a device where you can fix the greater tuberosity back into position reduction of the fraction and the screws. And here is, this is the final three months follow-up as you would appreciate the head of the humerus in its normal shape. And that is the function. Here the incision is not, not the delta pectoral, not the posterior, not the, not the it is just, anterior, just little lateral to the delta pectoral incision. And that is the function. And this is the classical picture of a multi-lock nailing system. Which has, which has a screw with a, with a, with a, with a, which, which impacts into the nail itself and a screw in screw position, which can really multi-directional the, the screw, screw fixation, which gives stability to the fracture. Whereas here is a fracture, the Indian way, where, where it is a two-part fracture. I'm in a three-part fracture, which was just done with a tension band device. And compared to the fellows 25,000 or a multi-lock nail, which is 40,000 rupees, and just with the tension band device, which you would appreciate the fracture as beautifully nice. And that was that was the picture before, and this was the picture before, and that is the functional range of that patient. Here is a 72-year-old man with diabetes and peripheral neuropathy. It is a C3 fracture. You would see appreciate when you go in, it will be impossible to do anything. But still, if you really put back into position, this was this was done nearly seven years ago with a olecranon and osteotomy. We know more day, and the placing of the plate is again controversial. Whereas here is a, a 73-year-old lady with a classical uh, classical plating system of today, with with the latest type of devices, where a complete range of movement has taken place. And here is an elderly patient with a, with a, with a non-union. What is important in an elderly patient with osteoporosis is to bring about impaction, bring about osteogenesis at the fracture site. And with a simple plating, with a simple plating posteriorly, the, 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 the good results have been achieved. And that is the functional range of that particular patient. When I look into this patient, which was, which was my colleague's uh, actually the 70, 70 year old, where there is where there is multiple fractures, there is no bone at all. And a multiple, multiple devices, multiple tension band devices have been fixed in. You would appreciate there is no bone at all when you when you get in there, and and you, you would appreciate with that the fracture has been. So so in the in our country, we can devise things. Whereas in conditions like this, when we went in, there was no bone at all. Uh, the, the condyle though was looking looking good, there was just a shell of ball. So it can't be, in such cases, a joint replacement is the answer. <clears throat> Radial head is a controversy, if a controversy again, whether to, whether to excite the, even in an elderly. If the ligaments are, are good enough, then you can excite the head of the radius in an elderly. Whereas if, the, if not, replace the head of the humerus, or if the bone is good enough, you fix it with a plate. 
The lower end of the, uh, the radius is a very common fracture in osteoporotic fractures. And we have gone on from different types of fixation from, from, from nearly from KYS to the different types of play fixation which have come into where fragment fixation and anterior plate and a posterior plate and a lateral plate and now the variable angle plates have come into being. And uh, whereas look into this patient, which I which I presented in one of the one of one of the hand hand surgery meeting, and uh, every hand surgeon said I will once the hand surgeon said I will put a plate laterally, I will put a plate anteriorly, I will, uh, I will even repair the ligament uh, with the, the on the medial side. What we did was just reduce the fracture. You a 70 year old man and reduce the you see you see the fracture there and you see the fracture there. And it is reduced back into position, and that is that is finally after 12 months review, and you see all the modalities of a radial inclination, the radial inclination, the volar tilt, and every aspect of it is is correct. What is important is is what is to be done for a for that particular patient, and that is the, that is the alna variance in its position, and. That is the functional range of that particular elderly patient. Well, proximal humeral fracture intracapsular neck of femur in elderly undisplaced ideal even now is to do a cannulated screw. And the, though variations, it depends on Powell's type 3, various modifications have been done, but it does not, in an elderly patient, if it is comminated, the ideal thing is to do a cemented bipolar today. And if the patient is quite healthy and, and is working and is walking about 65 to 70 years of age, depending on the, on the physi physiological age of the patient, it is better to do a totally preparation. Because whatever type of fixation in the internal fixation in fraction of the femur, about 70 years of age has been proved that 30% of these patients will have reoperation. Well, in trochaic fractures, of course, the options are the gold standard of DHS. We have come to intramedullary device. Shiv Shankar is there, who, the, who is a proponent of PFN. And, and, and it is true. It is, it is an ideal situation in this condition. And when, especially when, when it is an unstable fracture. When it is a long or short, what is important is reduction of the fracture per se and the placement of, of, your, of your screw or, or the blade and the nail. Here is a patient, he was, he was a 70-year-old man where, where the patient had operated by Dr. Talwalkar of Bombay nearly 45 years ago. And uh, the, what a classical osteotomy was done, what was called the McMurray's osteotomy in those days. The patient came after 45 years, he was cycling, he fell off the cycling and the cycle and had a very plain fracture. What would you do? And I sent it to all my friends. Everybody said a long process is to be undertaken. And with the great difficulty, nearly for three hours, we could remove that implant and just put a plate on the lateral side. And that is the immediate post-op. And that is the final picture. Even in an elderly 70-year-old man, if, if, if you know the biological aspects and the type of fixation, the fracture can be nine. Whereas from unipolar, we have gone to bipolar, to total, total hips. It is not a de debate on this particular fracture today, but what is ideal for that age of the patient and depending on the bone, ideal today is to do a bipolar with cement or, and, or depending on the physiological age and the strength of the bone, a totally replacement. Here is a 75 year old man nailed like this with, a, with, with this. What is important is don't do any harm. All that was done we had to, because there was no other option because the entry point was not there, no other type of fixation would suffice. So you'll have to innovate and a plate was put in. And, and that, is, that, is, that, is the, that is the final picture which you would see. Here is a patient which, which was interesting. The patient had a periplate fracture of this nature. And what would you do? The question was, what, what, is, what, what would you do? And you'll have to innovate. It was not possible to remove that implant because done about 20, 20 years ago. So all that we, we did was we tried to remove, it was not possible. All that we did was that the screws were removed and we had prepared, pre-planned it and a nail, the, the retrograde nail, we made holes in an anterior posterior direction and innovated and put the, put the nail right up, up till there and then put two screws across as you see there and finally the fracture in action. 
So even in elderly patients, if you understand the biomechanics, you can bring about union and fracture. Here is a shattered distal and distal humerus. This was this was an old X-ray where a unicortical screws are not to be not to be put in. I will show you an example example. No, sorry, and but here the fracture did unite in spite in spite of a unicortical screw. Whereas uh, the the retrograde nail has a role. Unfortunately, many of these patients will have severe osteoarthrosis, so that has to be taken into consideration before you really undertake a distal femoral nail. Here is a patient with, with a, with a, you see a peri, peri, uh, peri prosthetic fracture. I won't go into the Vancouver classification or other runner back classification in the, in the, around the knee joint. But if the bone is good there, all that is required is to fix a plate. This was 75 year old patient with good results. And here is a patient with with a trochantic fracture. The bone is so thin. The patient had had a had a had a process distally, and you would appreciate that you will have to renovate and put a long plate, reverse the reverse the plate of the distal femur, and it was it was the fracture is united. Here is an elderly patient with hardly any bone, which you see there with a shattered humerus, a shattered femur, and the, the patient had a prosthesis higher up, and all that was at the plate was put in. But strongly, as I mentioned, unicortical screws are dangerous and this fail and a bicortical screw had to be fixed in and the fracture unites. And this, this fracture, which is a 68 year old, which you would appreciate, with, with, which is away from, the, away from the joint and you had a good, good place for a plate to be fixed in. And that is, that is the ideal, ideal picture after 15 months. Where the fracture has ideally done. What I'm stressing is in osteoporotic fractures, if given the proper biomechanical status, the fracture will unite. And here is our here is one of our patients where where, where it is you would appreciate where, where, you, where a plate has been put in and it is an almost a fraction above the prosthesis level, and there was place for the for the plate to be fixed in. So, gentlemen. I, the, the time, the ideal situation in osteoporotic fractures is pin and plasters are not just enough. A call for treatment for osteoporotic fracture, which was by Ethel and Stores way back in 2008. So efforts have to be concentrated on preventive aspects. Prevention of osteoporosis and that by fracture prevention. So that our elderly all over the world are saved from the agony of osteoporosis and related osteoporotic basic mechanical and biological aspects of internal fixation of fractures can never be eclipsed by a new fixation device. Whatever variable angle plate or the multi-lock nail or whatever type, it can never be eclipsed by new fixation device. Inferior surgical handicrafts. I stress inferior surgical handicrafts is even more for the unforgiving in osteoporotic bone than in normal bone. Surgeon should be a gardener and not a carpenter. To conclude, in osteoporosis worldwide, and especially in India, threat is a reality. It has to be faced with vigor and an interdisciplinary approach. Be innovative and use God-given sunlight, food supplements like groundnut, fish and milk, and yoga to prevent osteoporotic fractures. Antiresorptives are still the mainstay of medical therapy, but long-term therapy can cause complications, which I have envisaged and mentioned. PTH and teripartite, denizumab have opened new vistas for medical treatment of osteoporosis. Gene therapy and stem cell therapy are proving new horizons, but, but not still. And I hope there is a hope for osteoporosis and osteoporotic fracture. Once again, thank you, Neeraj and uh, Shu, and all of you. And uh, I will, I'm open for questions. As surgeons with the advent of newer plates and nails, Fixation of osteoporotic fractures have become easier world over no doubt. But in developing countries like India, with the same basic principles of tension band, buttressing and impacts, and Elizaro method of fractures, I add innovations. He is finishing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That is a great collection of cases you have almost you have covered all the varieties of fractures. <laughs> I don't think anybody you have left anything for the to ask questions in this uh, topic. 
Yes. Uh, there is one question from Dr. Dakshina Murthy. Yeah. Is there any role of serum calcium uh, PTH vitamin D levels during follow? Yes. Serum calcium uh, may not be of help at all. Majority of these patients will have either normal or low, a little low calcium, but it doesn't really give an indication of that. Except biomarkers, even vitamin D, yes. If there's a vitamin D deficiency, you do a vitamin D today, and after three months, you give vitamin D, and if it has improved, that shows that a vitamin D supplementation has been done. But it doesn't tell you that whether osteoporosis has really improved or not. Yes. There is a question. Is it necessary to do DEXA in all patients? Preferably, that is the, that is ideal the, just for the for the sake of uh, legal point of view. When you, when you put on bisphosphonates and if he has a fracture there later or uh, any any complication which occur, it is better to give. But always it is better to have an investigation done. At least if it is not, then at least do uh, ultrasound and see whether whether it is whether whether there is whether there is a deficiency. Sir, I have a query. Yeah. So, uh, like about the DEXA only, basically, what about patients who come like at the age of 70 plus, 60, yes. 70 plus yes. uh, with a fragility fracture? It could be a distal radius fracture or it could be a hip fracture yes. or it could be a simple pubic ramus or osteoporotic compression fracture. Yes. Yes. When there is a fracture, is there any role of DEXA already? No, when there is a distal radius fracture, when, when, when it is obvious in the X-ray that it is uh, osteoporotic, I showed you some X-rays which is obvious oh. osteoporotic. It will only show the severity of osteoporosis. If it is minus 2.5 and it is beyond, that has to be rectified. So if the patient can afford, otherwise many of the patients, though we have a DEXA, we do not really, really do it routinely. Only if it is necessary, if the patient can afford just for his satisfaction. Otherwise, we put them on teripartite straight off. Uh, do you routinely, uh, so if you see an osteoporotic distal radius fracture, Yes. Do you advise them teriparatide after, even if you're putting a plaster or surgery, whatever, basically, we are no, doing no, treatment. No, no, we explain to the patient with calcium and vitamin D, we explain that it's better to take at least bisphosphonate. And uh, ideally, it would be better if he, if he takes, uh, if he takes uh, teripartide because that is the bone forming uh, agent. So if the patient agree, we put them on uh, the teripartide because even if it is a distal radius fracture, that patient is likely to have a fraction of a femur or a trochanter fracture in the time by. So it is better to prevent it and tell them this is likely because later if they sustain, you will be feeling sorry and the patient will blame you. So one extension of the teripartide, yeah. many uh, small CMEs which we used to attend before the COVID era with the pharma companies of teripartide. And Many orthopedic surgeons used to ask, so what happens is that teriparatide can be only given for 24 months in one lifetime. Yes. yes. So is it uh, possible that patient takes it for six months or one year now after first fracture and then uh, st they stop taking? So when they have a second fracture, unfortunately, should we, can we give them the one year later on, maybe after two years? Dr. Shu was asking me that particular question. There is no definitive literature as even today, whether it can, as you rightly said, it cannot be repeated once you are given the full dosage. So yes. when it is six months, there is no definitive proof that whether it can be given or not. But I feel it can be given because the full dose is not given. Okay. Yeah. I think there are only one or two study done in mice. They said that uh, if the duration is more, it can cause osteosarcoma of the jawbone. So I don't think uh, no, that uh, that we studied that after that the reports never came. Actually, I presented this long back in one Tirupati conference, and yeah. that time I said it can cause osteosarcoma. And after that, none of the literatures came in. So yeah, that, that's what uh, of, I put, took off that slide. From there. So <laughs> that is the reason why that 18 months cutoff period is there. That's Probably we, we had to use it for a longer duration and come with our own standards. Yeah, so, probably that could so be. For that. a fragility fracture, say for patient is say 65, 70 year old, yeah. we start him on teriparatide for two years. Yeah. After that, what do what is your recommended choice? Bisphosphonates or denosumab? Denosumab is the because of the cost factor. The bisphosphonate is a better bet. If the patient can afford denosumab, it is just three doses you give. Uh, when uh, zolendronic acid giving once in a year is, su is such an easy job. Yeah. So why you want uh, periperatide, which is a daily injection? Many of our patients, uh, we do give uh, zolendronic acid, especially in uh, the, especially in children, osteogenesis, osteo, 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 perfect and related other condition, we do give. 
but even in this we have started uh, now zaledonic acid rather than as you rightly said it is much easier once a year you just give the injection and forget about it. yes uh, you if there is any question yeah, i have i have i have many yes. queries sir i yes. have a lot of interest in osteoporosis and infection yes, so whenever dr agashi also takes in mumbai i have basically i like to pick his brain yes so uh, uh, do you in earlier days when all these things were not available Uh, yes. you are i am sure that you must have given an early uh, practice of your life nandrolone yes decadurable and that is nandrolone yeah we so, used to use such a lot of it androgen androgen yeah. so have you completely given it up or you still give it yes when there is androgen deficiency and it helps in uh, building up the general tissue as such not per se the bone it is in the muscles and it develops that so, so these thin thin osteoporotic that, ladies do you still give them like your bolin routinely for the, the injections we used to give but now we have stopped acha i completely stopped so what about dr shiv shankar are you giving it or you have also stopped no no i usually give because i always feel that calcium has to be replaced with calcium i give more of calcium with anabolic steroids i do use the other things like alternate pth other thing but uh, my thing is see the bone is reserved of calcium and deprived of calcium you require calcium for every activity of the cell mm. so it's better to replenish that that is my first line of treatment whatever the people say from the company that you have to increase the bone mineral density everything that's fine i give that as a additional treatment but not as a primary treatment okay additional is calcium and the vitamin d has to be supplied yes okay and uh... from dr dakshina murthy okay. again Yep. what is your end point of stopping osteoporosis management in terms of radiology biomarker or lab values no and there is there is no end point as such if you see the bisphosphonates can be repeated after 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 a slight period it can be vitamin if you think radiologically the patient uh, osteoporotic fracture or do a dexa after one year or two years if it is still minus 2.5 it has to be supplemented what drugs need to be taken lifelong no. i think calcium calcium or anything no yeah. I, 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 actually even calcium to give too much of calcium is not good for your kidneys yes. you know, I, i usually have a three months gap i give calcium at three months gap and again three months and i do not continue to give okay yes neeraj so what is the role of uh, prolonged vitamin d3 so i myself and my full family have been taking vitamin d3 60000 every month as a maintenance so oh. do you advise that generally to all osteoporotic patients vitamin d can have a secondary effect on the re renal threshold it can be, it can be bone resorptive if too much of vitamin d is given oh. so you should not give especially ergetrol 6 like units the oral it is all right the absorption is much less if you are giving 6 like units of ergetrol and by mistake you have written every day, every week it is given instead of then it can cause the renal this thing can cause the resorption of bone resorption of calcium from the bone yeah, i understand that i am talking about the general maintenance vitamin d3 like uh, 60000 per month yeah so is But it recommended or not recommended you, you do a vitamin d estimation and see mm -hmm. and if it is the if the vitamin d estimation is the, it has reached the threshold stop it okay you have to stop it you don't take it for life long no no okay so i think uh, that's it from my side dr shiv shankar you want to do the summary yeah uh, there is somebody is typing again dr dakshina murthy is typing so i thought a question might come anyway uh, yes some question has come just now when do you give a drug holiday to patient anticipating complications what complication we should look for no the complication can uh, vary from uh, headache to vomiting to allergic manifestations to renal renal problems to any 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 problem it has to be envisaged it has to be taken into consideration yes. the long term complications like subprochantic fractures or or the resorption of the jaw bone is a later complication but these are all immediate and late complications if it is immediately you stop it yeah before we went i'll ask a question yes sir any osteoporotic complication which you had to treat which you still remember means uh, anything any os complication related to osteoporotic in your life i yes. so the 
I had a, I showed a couple of uh, lower end humerus uh, fractures, lower yes. end humerus fracture. This, this patient uh, was a fairly well-to-do person and uh, the, 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 he, he came in and they, we thought we can fix it. And we went with the, the, with the classical uh, Manesh uh, reflection, uh, reflection surgery and when we went in, it was just a bag of bone. It was just a bag of bone. We did not know what to do because the X-ray showed fairly a large chunk of the lateral condyle and the capitulum and this one. But there, that was that was the, and we had to we had to really explain to the patient we couldn't. He, he still with the, he did not agree for a total joint replacement later because he, he had he had he had a abnormal movement at the elbow joint. We had to do just an excision and even then. it was rather difficult to explain. We should have got a joint replacement ready. Yeah, uh, Doctor. Uh Ram Prabhu wants to know, does steroid induce osteoporosis management same or different? Yeah, steroid has to be has to be stopped. The steroid, uh, see, uh, this is especially in rheumatoid patients. They get a uh, lot of uh, st steroid induced osteoporotic fractures, which is uh, many times is, is a different ball game because, the, because they, they can't stop steroids. The minute yes. you stop steroid, the rheumatoid problem uh, will uh, will flare up, and your rheumatology will not say that uh, don't don't will say that, don't stop. It. Then it becomes a problem. But teripartite has been helpful in these particular patients in treating treating these osteoporotic fractures with the fixation. Um, modern day steroid tablets are they also helpful? Because unlike the betanazole and other thing, now we have got. Uh, Newer medicines. Yeah, newer medicines, but the, but the complication rate is almost the same. Long-term therapy, it does have a, a direct relationship with the bone bone formation. Osteoclastic resorption is much more in this patient. Yes, sir. So the, you have answered all the questions which have come online as well as on my mobile. Thank you very much. It was Thank nice you. interacting Thank with you on a such a wonderful topic uh, that's uh, going to be much more difficult in the years because of the longevity of the people who are living in India. When yes. India got independence, the life expectancy was around 40 to 45 years. Now we are at between 70 to 75. Right. Probably in another 10 years time, it will be 80 right. to 85. So we have got a lot of elderly people to look after and the fragility fractures. So it is very nice uh, talk you have compiled both the managing uh, medically as well as uh, surgically you have shown the orthopedic way thank you very much thank for you, this sir. wonderful thank talk you. thank you Neeraj thank you very much thank you sir thank you yes, have sir. a good day god bless, god bless you we will fight the COVID-19 and come successfully next time yes.